Uh, it's sad, it's depressing. Vegas has changed forever and it's probably never coming back. Hotel rates, astronomical. Overall prices sky high. Corporate greed is at a max. While the customer experience, the perks, the comps, the benefits, they're at all time lows. What happened to the good old days of $4 drinks, food portions the size of your head, and good old customer service? Well, they're gone. Except you can still find them at one final place in Las Vegas, South Point. All right, South Point, Las Vegas, one of the most popular hotels in Las Vegas by far. It's a sleeper. I was reminded how popular it was the second I walked in because the check-in line was pretty much out the door. And I was really nervous. It was actually unsettling, but it moved fast. It was fluid. I made it up to my room in about 15 minutes. This is the Premium King. It's the absolute cheapest room here at South Point. This room is just a marvelous value. Um, it's one of the best values in Las Vegas, right up there, I'd say, with the Sahara and Planet Hollywood. This is not the newest hotel in Las Vegas, not by any means, but you would not know that by walking into this room. It is crisp and fresh and spotless. It's also spacious and really functional. And even better than that is the resort fee. Uh, it is what all resort fees should be. First of all, there shouldn't be any, but if there are, they should be as cheap as this one. So I'll, I'll reveal those prices later. Uh, I did accrue a few expenses along the way. Uh, I needed to pick me up after the Sahara. So this afternoon Starbucks cost me $8 and I needed some hydration as well. So I just stopped by the casino market. This large Aquafina was $3. Uh, I was shocked, so I got two of them. And uh, considering the prices of these, I might not even have to do a CVS run during this trip. There are numerous restaurants here. I'm gonna to try to see as many as possible. There are three steakhouses. And one of them was voted either top five steakhouse or top five restaurant in the city. I can't wait to explore that. I think we'll save that for the last night. Let's check out the other two first. Tonight I'm off to primarily Prime Rib. So that was not primarily prime rib. Primarily prime rib, it's not primarily open. It was closed last night and it's closed tonight as well. Unfortunately, there are five different types of prime rib available there. So hopefully I can get there on my last night. Uh, I had to pivot, I called an audible. I went to Silverado instead. Now I believe South Point was built sometime in the 2000s, uh, but Silverado, the decor in there is straight out of the 80s. I'm not sure what's really going on. Uh, there isn't even a bar in there. I had to do a table for one. Doesn't really matter though because the food was delicious. Um, talk about balling on a budget. So I had an espresso martini. It was the most expensive drink. It came with three coffee beans on top, one for luck, one for prosperity, one for happiness. That was $10. And then I ordered a stunning crab cocktail. This thing was beautifully botanical. It came with two different sauces. The mustard was good. The cocktail was great, but adding them together was unbelievable. That thing was dense. It was a meal within itself and for $26 it was a steal. Uh, I had to order an entree, of course, and I ordered the lamb Silverado. You always have to order the namesake dish when you go to a restaurant. Now, I don't do a lot of lamb. Uh, typically, when I order it, it's out of boredom, and last night was a good example of that. It was one of the better pieces I've ever had. It was surprisingly neutral, not that gamey. For $134, it was a ton of food. Uh, that lamb was also my breakfast this morning. That along with some Starbucks, which was another $8. Uh, I went to the market as well and grabbed two more waters. That was another six. And that leads me to right now. It is my first full day here. And normally I get things started at the pool, but I'm gonna switch things up. I have not been to South Point in a long time. And I just wanna roam around the property and explore it. I really wanna see why people love this place so much.
Okay, I have a problem. I am over tipping because everything here is so insanely cheap. Oyster Shooters, $6 a piece. That Michelada one was not only the most beautiful, it was the most delicious. And then I went over to Letterbuck Lounge. I just went there based off name alone. I love it. Now, I don't like whiskey. I don't like Moscow Mules, but I love the whiskey mule there. It was delectable. That was $6. Then I went over to CLS Lounge, and it's very unassuming, but it has the cheapest and best drinks. The drinks there were $4 a piece. The candy drink was like a butterscotch white Russian. It was by far the best drink I had all day. I got a gigantic ice cream bar. I think the price on that was like 5 or $6. I checked out the bowling alley, which was the first double-walled bowling alley I've ever seen. Super cool in there. Uh, there's an arcade, there's a movie theater. There is no shortage of stuff to do here. I even did some gambling. I went to the high limit area. I put $100 in the machine. I sat there for 30 minutes. I didn't win, I didn't lose. I cashed out with 100, but what the heck, I'll still throw in $100 as a gambling expense because I'm going to need to work extremely hard to spend this $1,000. I think I could maybe put a dent in it tonight though. I'm off to a four diamond restaurant. It's been voted a top five restaurant in Las Vegas. It looks super elegant inside. I'm off to Michael's Gourmet Room. Wow, wow, wow. It was incredible, spectacular. You know, the Four Diamond Restaurant Award is nothing to be trifled with. It's a big deal, but I'm not gonna lie. I question it being a top five restaurant in Las Vegas, but I could see how it is given that distinction. There's nothing else in Las Vegas like it. Tableside French dining. Those are like my two favorite things combined into one. I've never experienced anything like it ever. The compliments from the chef were a meal within itself. I wouldn't even have to order anything. Just sit down, a full loaf of amazing Parmesan pumpernickel, and then a huge array of crudite. Uh, the meal just kept on going and going and going. I only ordered three things, but just the free stuff kept on coming. It's an experience unlike anything else in Las Vegas. It has to be the most luxurious and elegant $200 dinner you can get. With tax and tip, it was $240 and it was so worth it. It was one of the most memorable and remarkable dinners I've ever had in my entire life. This morning, I got my obligatory Starbucks. That was $8. Two more waters. That was another six. I hit the gym this morning. I definitely needed that after last night. I'll probably have to go again today. Uh, I loved it in there. It was cool and dark and comfortable. A nice array of machines. I pretty much had the place to myself. Right now, I'm headed down to the South Point pool for some good old vitamin D. I can't wait to check that out. And then tonight is gonna be really big. Literally, I got primarily prime rib and then something really special planned after that. So that was the South Point pool. It was exactly what I thought it would be. It was peaceful, it was quiet. The thing that stood out to me was the utilization of space. I love the large jacuzzi area, isolated in the back, and also the grassy areas were a nice touch. Uh, they kind of lined the perimeter of the pool area, and not that the pool would ever get really loud, it's not the type of environment, but just in case you want to be down by the pool, but not by the pool, I thought that grassy area was a great touch. I had the craziest drink on the menu. It was an Adios Coco Loco. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it doubles as a piggy bank. So you can take this home with you, put your money in there, save up for your next Vegas trip, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, my overall expense though was $41. I tipped the waitress 20 bucks. She was super fun, hardworking, really intuitive, and uh, super humble as well, which I really respected. So $20 to her. Uh, overall pool day was 41 bucks and tonight I'm off to primarily prime rib I've been talking about this place the entire time. I hope the hype is real and then after that I'm gonna do something that I've never ever done before on the channel
Wow, that cowboy cut was thick. I put a steak knife up to it so you can kind of get some perception about how big that steak was. It has to be one of the densest, juiciest, largest pieces of meat I've ever been served in my life. Uh, it was a great dinner, $88, under 100 bucks for everything, tax and tip included. The star of the show for sure was that barbecue uh, short rib mac and cheese. That was delicious. Uh, I walked out of dinner at 5.30 p.m. and the lounge next to it was buzzing. Um, I'm not really sure, I think it was like a Mexican place and it looked to be a happening place to be. So maybe I could check that out later tonight or definitely in my next South Point video. Tonight I'm gonna switch things up. I'm gonna do something I've never done before on the channel. I'm gonna start doing new stuff in Las Vegas. Try to switch things up. For the first time ever on the channel, I'm off to an evening entertainment show. So you probably did not expect to see a Righteous Brothers show last night or on my channel, but that was a really special event for me because I grew up listening to that music uh, in the back of my parents' car, around the house. They have some of the most popular songs of all time. Some of their tracks are actually in the Library of Congress. Not the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but the Library of Congress. They're one of the most famous groups of all time, and it just wasn't oldies. Um, the show was incredibly energetic and diverse. They did some gospel, they did some Elvis, they did some rock and roll, they did some West Side Story, they did some Lean On Me. I was the youngest person there, but it doesn't really matter of age. I think if you're a fan of music, music history, um, or if you're just looking for a great show that's an hour and a half for a great price, it's a show I think you absolutely have to put on your list and attend when you're here at South Point. The ticket price was $45. Um, with tax and fees, it was $51. So that was the last expense of this trip. I'm gonna get to my total in a second. Let's talk about this room very quickly. This is the Premium King. It's the cheapest room here at South Point. Um, I got this hotel for the room rate for $79 a night, flat rate across three nights. Uh, that is $237. Taxes on top of that were 31. And then the resort fee, which I typically have a disdain for. I think they are borderline fraudulent. This one actually didn't annoy me too bad. Uh, it was $27 a night, which is half the price of what you'd pay on the strip. So including everything, the room rate, the taxes, the fees, grand total over three nights was $349. Now remember, I brought $1,000 to this hotel. I had $1,000 of cash to spend, and I definitely brought way too much. Uh, my overall expenses for this trip, and I did pretty much all the best and craziest and most indulgent stuff, was $746. $746, and I could have easily trimmed that down by another 250 because I counted my gambling expense in that, even though I broke out even. And then I ordered a couple things at the restaurants, which I really didn't want, like that crazy dessert at Michael's and a few other things. So I could have easily done this trip for $500. Uh, nonetheless, it comes in at 746. Grand total for the entire trip. I almost did everything for $1,000. It came in just a little under $1,100. I think the exact total is like $1,095. The value here at South Point, the prices here at South Point are what Vegas should be. It's the Vegas I grew up with. It's the Vegas that we used to think about. It's the Vegas that has died. This is the last bastion in Las Vegas where you can get actually something for your money. The dollar is worthless everywhere else in America except here at South Point. Four dollar drinks, uh, portions the size of your head, and there's a ton of stuff to do here. There's a bowling alley, uh, they have an arcade, there's a movie theater, uh, they have some entertainment shows, 
tons of gambling. This is one of the biggest casino floors I've seen. Great poker room, something for everybody. This is the true example of what Las Vegas is and they are carrying the torch of what true Vegas was and still is.